like I do have legs and feet, but not a human. Mm-hmm. Like I have a body, like feet, arms, and legs. Does your body look similar to that of a human or entirely different? Mm. Like a humanoid, Mm -hmm. uh, like a fish mermaid humanoid. Mm -hmm. Describe your body. How is it different from a normal human body? So, I have webbed feet and the hands are webbed. body is um, like the bodies have these scales like the mermaid scales Mm -hmm. and there's no hair on my head what about your face And I feel like I do have gills Mm -hmm. and like a little, my ears are like, like fins, a little mini, instead of like ears, but it looks like mini fins, Mm -hmm. but it's in the area where the ears are. Mm Mm-hmm. Very good. And are you in space or are you in water or where are you? I think I'm currently, I felt like I was floating in space, but I'm not sure now if that's because I'm underwater. Do you know if you're male or female? Mm. I feel like a male. Mm -hmm. Very good. Tell me something about yourself. Is there anyone with you? No, I don't see anybody right now. Um, What are you doing here? I'm still trying to see where I am at. If I'm floating in space or underwater. Can you take me in a little deeper? I feel like I came out a little bit. Very good. Let's go deeper and deeper. Five, going deeper, taking a deep breath in and out. Four, going deeper still, allowing yourself to just let it flow, taking in another deep breath in and out. Three, going down, down, all the way down, taking in another deep breath. Two, going down, going deeper. And one, allowing yourself to feel everything you need to feel. Are you moving on your own or are you just floating without any effort? 
I think I am underwater, mm -hmm. under the ocean. And like a mermaid, but just with two legs. Um, I could just effortlessly just float underwater. Mm -hmm. I guess just a little wiggle of my feet. Um, when I want to go somewhere, I just like a, how humans swim with the fins on, those flappers, the deep divers. Mm -hmm. It's kind of like that, but more of a, I guess, like a mermaid body, um, mermaid type of uh, wiggle to the body. Mm -hmm. It just feels very serene, calm. I see a few others swimming by. I've, I think I'm still alone. But the feeling I get is there is no trouble here. No worries. Very peaceful. I think I... It feels weird because... This is like a continuing past life from another session I had with com completely different uh, induction. and But I was a female. Mm -hmm. I was female back then. But the same, same f fish humanoid. Mm -hmm. e E.T. alien, I guess. But I feel like I'm a male. Mm -hmm. Is that female around here in your lifetime? Or is that a different time? I guess different time. Mm -hmm. Is it the same place, the same environment? It's the same planet, but and it's a little confusing. It's, it seems like it was the same planet, but it's a um, just a different location. Mm -hmm. Very good. I remember we all lived under the ocean like Little Mermaid, mm -hmm. um, we speak through telepathy with each other. Did you ever come out of the water? Yes. Did you ever walk on land also? Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. But majority of time, you do spend time underwater And um, it is come out to, I don't think we live out out in the ocean, like outside on the beach, but we do come out. And are you able to breathe out of the water? Mm, yes. Mm -hmm. Very good. Can you tell Somehow. me what happens when you come up, out of the water? Are there any creatures that always live on land, on your planet. It's just um, 
I mean, I see little like little crabby looking things like a hermit crab and little mini crabs. Just a very white sparkling sand, very soft. Just everything is really pretty. Mm -hmm. um, Does it look similar to Earth or is it quite different? A little similar, but more like untouched. Mm -hmm. It's um, it's like very much like fantasy land. If humans were to were to picture it, very good. Now tell me something about your life underwater. Tell me something about perhaps your family or what it is that you do from day to day. I think... I think I do have a family and a wife and one child and we harvest kelp. I think that's what they're saying, kelp. Mm -hmm. kelp like seaweed mm -hmm. or some type of vegetation underwater to to feed the family mm -hmm. and how is it there's that? uh there's not like a job or anything like that besides gathering your food. Just exploring the ocean. I guess just living day by day, enjoying life. There's no mm -hmm. worries or stress. It's very easy going. Everybody's nice to each other. Mm-hmm. There's plenty of food to go around. So, so there's no greed, no uh, poverty. Everybody is in a very harmonious, harmonious state. Are there any other creatures underwater that you interact with? I think there are normal, like normal fishes and there other sea creatures and animals, like what we see in when in the planet Earth. Excuse me. Um, <sighs> but um, not not sort of in a way like. AT alien race like us. But there are other like like normal fishes and like starfish. Very but good. Let's go and move ahead a little bit in time now. Let's go to a significant moment in that lifetime. Three moving ahead now to zoom in closer and closer and one be there now significant moment in that lifetime tell me what's happening hmm. 
not sure, but I think I think my wife is in bed dying, mm -hmm. or she's in bed sick. And when you say bed, what does that like, look like? Kind of like carved out instead of a giant coral reef. It's underwater. Mm -hmm. And it's like, like a coral reef smooth stone-like stuff that we lay inside. I see. Uh, what is happening? What is happening to your wife? She's she's ill. I'm not sure exactly why, but something internal. What are the symptoms? It feels like she's just weak and there's nothing we could do. So it was just watching her. Just watching her with my kid. I think it's a son. <sighs> just standing by her just kind of saying goodbye but you know just accompanying her comforting her what happens next she just took her last breath mm -hmm. and she's gone It's sad, but um, you know, it's what I'm feeling is it is what it is. There's nothing that could have been done to save her. Mm -hmm. Do you have a belief system about what happens when someone dies? No. So it's just a lot. I think the life just continues. Mm -hmm. You live with, you know, now I guess I, I'm i surviving, or not surviving, but I'll be living with my son, teaching him the ways of how we do things and, you know, gathering food and vegetations, teaching them techniques, basically mentoring them. Um, what do you do when someone dies? Do you perform some kind of ritual funeral perhaps? I don't know. I don't think so. I think we might ra wrap them up. Not like a mummy, but we ra wrap them up to take them somewhere, take the body, the flesh somewhere. But not like a religious ceremony or rituals. It's kind of like um, I think that's why we just stay around and to say our last goodbye, and then when they're gone, they're gone. Mm -hmm. Very good. Let's move ahead now in time again. 
to a significant moment. Three, going to a significant moment in that lifetime. Two, and one, be there now. I feel I feel old now. I feel mm -hmm. like I've I've aged. My son's grown up to be a man. Mm-hmm. What does your life look now? Look like now that you're old? I'm just laying in bed or laying laying down. I feel like I lived a good life. Mm -hmm. And maybe my son is doing the same thing. I don't know. This might be my deathbed. He's just looking down, watching over me. <sighs> is it just your son or are there other people as well? I just see my son. Mm -hmm. And I feel like I lived a good life, feel a little weak. Just probably dying of old age. And uh, I think I'm ready to go. What does that feel like? What do you feel in your body except for the weakness? Ready to go to sleep. Just relax and go to sleep. Mm -hmm. And let go. Okay, very good. Allow yourself to fall asleep now. And let go. And tell me what happens next. As your soul disconnects from your body. I'm seeing my body from above. It looks peaceful, like I'm sleeping. And my son's, you know, looking above me of the physical body. And it just wraps me around with a some type of wrap or a blanket type of thing. What happens next? Do you stay floating above your body like that? Yeah. I think I'm ready to go. Mm -hmm. I think I feel like there was no, the purpose of that life was to just enjoy every little moment, enjoy everything around you, creating memories with whatever you have not having to stress or, you know, just relaxing and enjoying the life with the, with your family and your community, mm -hmm. um, helping one another. So I think the ultimatum, ultimate part of this is that there's no suffering in that life. Mm -hmm.
Nobody suffers. Somebody always very, uh, very close, tight knit, like unity group of, you know, group of extraterrestrial that it, if another feeling some type of lack, they feel it because it's telepathic. So they immediately help as you would do for yourself. Mm -hmm. So, because they, they are all connected. Like, like your cells are separate, but your body is one. Like that type of ideology. Mm -hmm. Although there are separate fish humanoids, they are all one because they are all connected through telepathy and energy. So, with if one becomes in pain, it passes on through others. So, they do whatever they do or they can in order to help the other which also heals themselves mm -hmm. is what I'm getting. Have you lived several lifetimes on this planet? I see the number three, so maybe three lifetimes. Mm -hmm. Very good. Maybe that's why I was a female the other time. Mm -hmm. And why is it that you're seeing this lifetime today? What is the connection for you in this current lifetime? I think the message behind it is I should remember to connect like how I did in that lifetime in this lifetime in earthly realm as a human, it's the same thing as we are all connected here. Mm -hmm. So when I help them, it's like it's also helping me. Mm -hmm. So um, utilizing that experience and I brought it up on earth to assist the humanity. I see there's a lot of pain here, a lot of suffering in this planet. Mm -hmm. So I was sent here or volunteered to heal the planet, but as well as to humanity. And when I do that to them, they'll be recharged and they'll be grateful and they want to repay back. And that becomes like a domino effect. Mm -hmm. So to do it to others. And that's what I'm supposed to do here to teach them. To teach them to be. To. God, well, I guess. Yeah, to teach them and to lead, lead them how to help one another once you've been healed. So mm -hmm. I, I'm the first, I guess I'll be the first head of the domino. Uh -huh. And then that will continue on throughout mass millions of humanity. Uh -huh. And that will help heal. <sighs> that would help heal people, the humanity, which helps heal the planet. And the ones that heal will shift into the higher dimension. Uh -huh. And 
this is what is needed during this period right now. Excellent. And as you are now in the spirit realm after this lifetime, tell me what happens next. Where does your soul go after this lifetime? I think I see the light, so I believe I go back to the light mm -hmm. before reincarnating Don't el elsewhere. Analyze. Just allow it to flow. Allow yourself to experience everything. What happens next? I do, I am going towards the light. It's like I'm floating. Mm -hmm. and I'm floating towards this bright white star like light above it's like a portal like a door opening mm -hmm. but in a bright white light and I just entered and then the portal or the door closes And then what? Are you alone here? No, this is just a... This is like the dimension where all the souls hang out. This is... This is where everybody goes when they... When they exit the life of whatever the experience that they had. It's just, if some people want to call it the heavens, this is where God, God's source energy is. There's the council. And you go do your reviews of your life that you just left. And this is not to do any type of punishment, but it's just going over the things you've learned, the things that you experience, things you felt. Tell me about your life review. It was, it was a very serene, good life. No, nothing to worry. There's no danger. There was no stress. It was easy flowing life. Maybe that's why I went back there three times. Because the life there is easy. There's no suffering. No hate, jealousy. No you know, killing one another. You just die when you're ready, right? When you're, when it's your time mm -hmm. or, yeah, when it's your time, if, what are, whether that being illness or some type of accident, when it's your time, you die. So I can't really say there's like grief. It's, 
you do miss them when when you die, but there's no grief or heavy sadness. The emotions are an extreme. There's no extreme happiness or extreme sadness or anger. There's joy. There is, it's like the planet I just left, they don't understand hurt. They don't understand pain. Because if anything happens, they all jump in to help. So nobody ever have to suffer. Mm -hmm. So, you know, it didn't, it's not like it was boring, but everybody was in a very harmonious state. And uh, I had a pretty good life there. Mm -hmm. Wonderful. So what happens next after you review your life and sit, speak with the council? I think uh, I'm not I think I'd take a break before I choose another life or another incarnation. Mm -hmm. Why do you take a break? It's just things that needs to be done, I mm -hmm. think. Just every all the souls take a break before because there are others that it's kind of like you have to wait in line. Mm -hmm. The other souls get to experience the incarnation. So somebody else will take that spot, kind of like, mm -hmm. right? You take a ticket, you have a waiting list to get back to whatever planet, whatever incarnation. Oh. <sighs> Are there places where the waiting list is longer? You just like uh, you just put your. I think you just you'll know when you're ready. Like the heavens, the di the dimension that you're in, we're in, is so peaceful, serene. That you know, you kind of, I don't know, I guess you have to have a little itch to get back to have an experience, or you have to volunteer, or you, unless you want to volunteer. Very good. So, what happens next as you're having this break? What, what are your activities in the spirit realm? Just help around. Help around with the things. It's like if I want to go read a book because they have informations mm -hmm. of different creation of source, God, creator. If I want to learn, there's an area kind of like like in library. Mm -hmm. uh, it's just like a, you could say it's like a resort, you know? You don't have to really do much, but you can help out with, assist with things that, you know, if you want. If you want to relax, you could. Mm-hmm. You don't have, it's not like a job, you know, you just live and just kind of like, like you're on vacation. Mm -hmm. And what is it that you do 
what is your what does your time there look like I'm just I'm writing a story or writing a book of the life I just left mm -hmm. so that could go into the collection mm -hmm. of the library or others could read about mm -hmm. I'm seeing myself writing and it looks like it's going to be made into a book so I think that's what's happening uh, making memos, writing down everything that has happened, the experiences, what I felt. That's if there was a feeling, you know, so. And then, uh, yeah, that gets created into a book. And what is it that you think others can learn from your book, Other Souls? It's just fascinating thing mm -hmm. for them because in the higher dimension, there is, you know, they, it's kind of like, for instance, you're reading a fantasy book versus a horror story mm -hmm. or so I guess you could say my book will be more like a fantasy book where mm -hmm. you live as the sea creature alien underwater and it's it's pretty much similar to what's going on right now but more community wise they're more intact more closer like in the higher dimension in the spirit world Everything is energy, so not, nothing has to be forcefully done. It's kind of like it's always there. Mm -hmm. But so like food is always there. Like, well, there's no food, I guess. But whatever the ne needs or the necessities are always there. But whereas the the planet I just came from, I do have to go harvest the food scavenge the food uh, you know and you know do things like that um, so I'm just writing a story how it was a beautiful life and how it feels like to be living underwater as a mm -hmm. fish creature very good what happens next after you've written this book? What else do you do now in the spirit realm before incarnating again? I think I think there's a there's some waiting time but I start to prepare. There's some preparation, which is a process for my next incarnation, for wherever I want to either experience or volunteer. It's kind of like writing down a list of things that you know, where I want to go, what I want to experience, who am I going to be, like, who's my family? What are the choices what, that you're making? Yes, like, I'm creating basically, like, like a movie script, right? Like, mm -hmm. a, a, like a, a play 
who's going to be the family, what kind of life I'm going to be experiencing. Is it going to be hard or is it going to be easy? Um, what I'm ready for, am I ready for something more harder, mm -hmm. more harder experience just because I'm curious what it feels like to be? Uh, do I want to experience as a female? Uh, do I want to experience traumas? And how did that feel? And it's just, it's literally like creating a play to experience what it's like to be like in that planet as that certain individual in order to come back and I guess write another book mm -hmm. or write another, you know, whatever book or scroll, whatever that they do. I think it's a book. And um, you just get creative, right? Like, how do you exit that life? Mm -hmm. Do you just die peacefully or do you die tragically? You know, it's how, how creative you want to get and how ready you are to experience that. Mm -hmm. Like, obviously, if I just came back from a very traumatic life, I need some healing done, right? It's, uh, or not healing, but as in like, just some rejuvenation. And um, so I may not want to go back into another traumatic lifetime. I might want to relax a bit and then go back into something more easy and peaceful. So it's just like a, you write your own creative play. And there's like a central system that you store all your information, kind of like, like a computer. Computer-like, <laughs> thus, excuse me. Uh, it's kind of like, that's where the, all the information goes and that's where it's connected to source energy and Source energy wants to know. Mm -hmm. We're like the little ants or souls, or we could call it the little minions, go out and experience. And you know, you create different probabilities, different, uh, get as creative as possible. Are you going to experience? A war, are you going to experience more peaceful, you know? And so, you know, until then, you need to kind of like, um, and I do, actually, I do believe that if you come back from a traumatic experience, your soul does go through healing, kind of like, uh, there's a place that it heals you. It just kind of nurtures you. Like the post-traumatic disorder that the soldiers get. Kind of places like that, you know, like just as some type of trauma. And so it just kind of like they neutralize anything that you have experienced if it was really bad. Mm -hmm. What well, can it's you just, tell uh, me about your next life now that you're writing the script for? Hmm. I'm not exactly sure. 
do you have some options or is are the options uh, limitless it's limitless mm -hmm. I'm getting, getting, preparing to come to earth mm -hmm. is something I'm just kind of picking up on. Have you ever been to earth before? Mm. Not yet. Mm -hmm. So I'm carefully preparing from what I've heard or what I've read, the information that I received, earth isn't for faint of heart. And the free will makes it even harder. Mm -hmm. And Why is it that you're uh, considering going to Earth now, this time? I feel like it's, there's like a, like it's my duty to, like I, like I volunteer. I feel strong enough that I could go help the planet. Mm-hmm. I'm seeing the planet Earth kind of like a rundown, rundown machine, very rundown. Like it's 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 in a lot of trouble, and the call was there. If anybody could come assist, and I think I signed up for it. Mm -hmm. And is there anything specific that you think you can do for Earth? Any specific skill that you would like to use? I think that I feel that the, the experience I just had from this previous life and maybe the lives before could help comfort the people, which will help heal the people, mm -hmm. teach them, teach them how to unify, mm -hmm. um, teach them the techniques that uh, when you stick together, it's more powerful. Mm -hmm. So not one single person is left behind. Mm -hmm. You help the others like you're, as mm -hmm. you are help yourself. And in, in that case, there's, there's nothing that could destruct that unity, which becomes the ultimate power. And I think that's what the planet Earth needs because it's very broken. That's the word that they're telling me, or I'm I'm getting broken. It's a lot of people that are lost. There's a lot of people that are in pain, suffering, confused. Um, they, they're disconnected with who they truly are and the capability that they have. And it's my duty to go remind them mm -hmm. who they are and that they, they are direct connect. They have a direct connection to source creator, God and and teach them 
how powerful they are. Mm -hmm. It's almost like somebody through the masses shut off the buttons like a, to make them feel weak, mm -hmm. make them feel like they're hopeless, um, purposely suffering. So they have to depend on this higher power, which is a negative, negative entity or something. There's something behind it that's creating this mass destruction of separation and victim mentality and just that hopelessness. There are there are mass awakenings. Some people that are like the volunteers, they are doing their work, but it's so much of unhealed people, tra traumatized people, that more volunteers are coming in to assist so they could speed up the process. What about if a volunteer gets caught up in being human and everything that comes with it and the whole negativity? Can they still help? That could be possible, but they have this very strong intuition that they have to remember to connect with, which is also knowing to recharge their battery, setting the healthy boundaries. It is not your job to save everybody per se, but teach them how to save themselves. Teach them how to remind, teach them and remind them how powerful they are. And also, if they continue to refuse, that is their free will. So you need to honor that. Mm hmm. And so you just have to do what you can because there will be some people that need that hand to be reached out to be for them to grab. And you just give them a little pull to yank them up and they do have to use their feet and their other arm to pull themselves out of this darkness. That's the reason why I think the volunteers are called light workers because mm -hmm. we show them the light, but they have to pull themselves out of the darkness. Mm -hmm. You can't literally pull them out that is not your job or the light worker's job but you once you sh shine the light and if they look into the light instead of looking down into the darkness if they look up then when they're ready they're ready to it's like they have learned and they're ready to leave that darkness and they just need a little bit of that helping hand or a little light shined upon in order to give them a little boost, mm -hmm. a little push to the right direction. But not everybody, not everybody will be that way. So you have to honor their 
their current situation and uh, move on to the next. And people that are in need will cross your path. Mm -hmm. Very good. So tell me about the next lifetime after the lifetime you've just left behind. Going to Earth now. What more can you tell me about that next lifetime? Are you going to choose a human body? Can you count me down to another lifetime? I'm going to count you down to another lifetime. Am I going to count you down to the next lifetime or any lifetime? Uh, it's any. Any lifetime. Yeah. Very good. Moving ahead now to another lifetime that you need to revisit today by floating and drifting through space and time for allowing the images to come three connecting with the emotions and all the information to zooming in getting closer and closer now and one you're there now and tell me what comes to mind Where are you? I'm not quite sure. I'm not sure. If I'm kind of getting Egypt. Mm -hmm. Tell me what you experience in Egypt. Do you see anything? I see like a sand on the floor, like that golden bright brown sand. And as you're looking at the ground, do you see your feet? Mm hmm. It's just right a some type of sandal type of shoes. Are they male or female feet? What's the impression that you get mm. about your body? Feel like male. Mm -hmm. How old would you be, approximately? Thirty-two. Mm -hmm. Very good. Can you tell me your name? Zohar, Z Zohar, I'm not sure if I'm pronouncing it right, but it sounds like that. Mm -hmm. Very good. Tell me something about yourself. Um. Are you indoors or outdoors now? I feel I'm outside. Mm -hmm. What does outside look like? Your surroundings? Do you see any plants? Any houses? I'm in the middle of a desert. I see mm -hmm. a, cam a camel. Mm -hmm. 
I see a pyramid. I think it's Giza. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't know. I just, I feel like I'm just standing there. Mm-hmm. Um, what are you wearing today? I have this like linen type of flowy like a wrap all over um, like a robe type of it's like a multiple layers mm-hmm. it's multiple layers but it keeps you cool because mm-hmm. it's like linen I have a headpiece like a made with cloth but looks like a donut Mm -hmm. wrapped around above my head and there's a piece hanging down kind of like rectangular behind my neck down to both ears kind of covering the back part of my neck from the sun Mm -hmm. and some type of a leather leather uh, shoes like a flip flop mm-hmm. from my feet touching the hot sand very good and what are you doing here out in the desert I don't know if I'm waiting for something or I'm supposed to be going looking for something. Just standing there. How are you feeling as you're standing there? Like, just something I need to be doing, I guess. I think, like, a, some type of a mission. Mm-hmm. Not exactly sure what that is. The word discover. Discover. Just, discover just came into me. Mm-hmm. I was supposed to discover something. Very good. Let's move ahead just a little bit in time and see what it is that you came here to do. Three, two, one. Um, going inside the pyramid, I see all the artwork and hieroglyphics. Um, I'm not exactly sure what I'm looking for, but I'm going in, like, in a search of something. Mm -hmm. Are you alone, or is there someone else with you searching? I'm alone. Mm Mm-hmm. Have you told anyone that you're going to the pyramid to look for something? No. Mm -hmm. I think... I'm not sure exactly where this came from, but it's kind of like some type of like a sense that, like I have this sense that I'm supposed to be looking or discovering something. And it's inside the pyramid, Mm -hmm. like a clue, either a clue or portal. No, the word portal just popped in my head, Mm -hmm. but some type of clue that leads on to the next. Mm -hmm. And where have you this idea from? that you might find something there. Um, (sighs) 
it's like I, I'm not exactly sure if somebody told me, but it's like I got it through like some stuff like intuition or a dream, like very spiritual way of a message that was sent to me. Mm -hmm. And it just suddenly I have this feeling to go into to the pyramid to look for this clue. Mm -hmm. And so just following the intuition. And, and did uh, you happen to live close to the pyramids or did you have to travel a long way to get there? I think I traveled a little bit because I brought the camel. Mm -hmm. And I noticed there was some stuff lugged around the camel. So there was a little bit of traveling involved. I don't think like for days or stuff like that. Um, very good tell me what happens next now in this pyramid um not exactly sure. It's like there's some truth, some type of truth or the clue that I'm supposed to be looking for. It's like, I don't know it, but if I see it, I'll know it. Mm -hmm. It's kind of like that. Very good. Let's move ahead now. Moving ahead in time until something important happens to you in that pyramid. Three, two, one. Um. No, I just I don't see anything anymore. Why is that? Um, I think I just kind of lost it. Mm -hmm. Just, just reconnect. Oh, allow yourself to go there again, reconnecting. You're inside the pyramid. Tell me what happens. With, with the candle, because it's dark in there, mm -hmm. or like a torch. It's like I'm reading through the hieroglyphic writing in a certain section. I don't know what section that is, but it's like a certain section. Are you able to understand what is written? Yeah, I believe so. Mm -hmm. I think there is, I don't know, this just suddenly came into my mind, but there is a message there how extraterrestrial are visiting or connected to humans. Mm-hmm. And I think since I'm a human, that's one thing that I was fascinated but didn't believe. The blue avian just came into my mind. Blue avians are the, the ones that Coming to assist the humanities while well back. I think there's something that I'm supposed to find out 
in order to get a clue and then that would help me understand for me to continue on my mission. That's what I think it is. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's almost like I'm looking for this missing puzzle. What I'm feeling as a human, I feel like there's something that I'm here to do, mm-hmm. but not exactly sure what it is and how, who I'm connected to. And so through dreams and intuition, they sent me to the pyramid to go read about one section that talks about kind of like what the previous extraterrestrials has done to help assist the humanity, to help them with the civilizations. And that's supposed to be, I'm not sure if that's the clue, but that's supposed to kind of give me the aha moment, the Mm -hmm. little light bulb moment in order for me to do this, do something similar. And and do that same thing as well as in just the natural knowledge I have, the natural talent. Instead of just keeping it to myself, I'm supposed to teach that to others Mm -hmm. to help them um, evolve. I see. And what is it that you're reading now in these hieroglyphs? after you've done reading all of it? What is the information that you've gained now so far? They they teach them, what I'm reading is they teach them how to harvest plant and plant and harvest food and I think we were civilized humans not so much like animals Mm -hmm. so I'm reading about that I'm seeing that Anunnaki was also involved So it's like I have some talent that I was born with and I'm just naturally good at it. So I'm supposed to gather a group of people and teach them all that. I think that's what I'm getting. Mm -hmm. Um, Teach them all that and then then have them teach their younger children or anybody else that is willing to learn, which is also helping them. And them helping others, which is continuously, again, the domino effect that I'm here to be as the pioneer to create some type of uh, unification or unity in people. Mm -hmm. Because when one person gives to the others, the other person feels grateful and they were gonna wanna do the same. Mm -hmm. So I'm seeing the box of matches and I am that one main match to strike the fire on others to keep that burning. So that first match strike is the most important because it'll it'll just pass down to others. So what I'm saying is if the match is wet, which means it's useless. So I'm supposed to sharpen the skills that I'm I came down with and 
when I do that, if I perfect it or to the point where it's good, then I could teach teach that to others and teach them how to be focused, but also it also strikes up their creative imagination because everybody has different creative imagination. And so maybe that would also strike the fire in them in order to find their ways to be useful in their whatever the techniques or the creative um, talent that they have and that is also continues on to everybody else and if everybody brings on their talent then the people or the village have a better surviving skills mm -hmm. very good I'm going to take you ahead now in that lifetime to the next significant scene. Five, drifting and floating, moving ahead in time now. Four, to the next significant scene. Three, able to tell me all about it. Two, and one, be there now. Where are you? So I got my just a elder, mm -hmm. uh, no old old man. I think I became just very old. I'm like in some kind of like a. They would call it farmer's market, like a, some type of village market. Everybody has their like a tent or their little sections and their talent that's cooking or, pl or farming or fixing something. They're, it's like a busy market. And I'm watching them. And the sensation and the feeling I'm getting is, I feel like I've done my mission, very proud of how the outcome came out to be. Because I think there was, majority of these people didn't really have this purpose or didn't get their talent expanded to the fullest. Mm -hmm. But what I did in the past that helped them, it created a, another form or another source of finding ways for them to Um, help one another, teach one another, discover their own creative creativity, talent that they never realized that they had. It's like kind of like a cause and effect. You have to have a cause in order to have an effect or something like that. And it's like the black and white, you know, like, if you don't even know if it exists, but if somebody teaches you something that they discover, they're like, oh, I didn't know I was, I like doing that or I was good at that. And then mm -hmm. that triggers them to want to find out, well, what else could I learn or do? So that helped create a very big village market. And 
I feel like I'm the respected elder that people look up to. Mm -hmm. And how did you bring about this this, um, this market? What have you done to create this platform for people? I think I taught them multiple techniques how to create things from fire, like alchemy, right? Mm -hmm. um, how to mold things through fire, how to, that's kind of like for men. And then I also taught other people how to plant seeds and farm properly without killing those are just some other few things that's popping into my mind um, I also taught them how to be nice to one another and if one is struggling then we all jump in to help that person and that person will do the same so Although I taught them talents and skills or created a some type of spark to bring out that creative talent and skills out of individuals, I also taught them how to work together and build a stronger village by thinking everybody as a family. Mm -hmm. so there's no jealousy or lack everybody it's not like there's money that needs to be paid in order to get it there's a trade kind of like they trade the items or services but you don't ever have to pay for it so everybody has all the resources that they need without having to worry about not being able to afford anything because the, the talent that they have could be also used for everybody else. Like the farmers need tools. So then the farmers will give them food to, you know, vice versa, that kind of way. There's some type of ex exchange and both are benefiting from it. Mm -hmm. But that, that was also taught through helping one another and it's kind of like, you know, you help another you get something good back from it too. So nobody, everybody wins. And that, that mental, that aspect of thinking, that mentality helps them also be in happy, harmonious, joyful, um, very close, group of people which is actually equals to just like the planet I just came from before incarnating mm -hmm. there because that's how they were so I brought that technique and I taught the humans the exact same technique there should be no stress, worries everybody gets what they need they get the help that they need because if you help them it's like you help yourself because they always bring you something also that you need and so it's teaching them 
how to love one another. And there's no condition. It's all unconditional. There's condition is taught. So by the way, I have taught them by helping one another, no matter what, is teaching them a lesson of how to be unconditional. Because you help them, that also helps you. Mm -hmm. And that person would always come by to help you as well. There's no, since I give you this, you owe me this, but you need this as well as I need this. And one day I will need whatever you could offer. And so there's just no lack mentality. So that created a very strong, and I think this is just a small village in the Egypt somewhere. You know, it's not, we're not talking about a big city. It's just a small group of people. Mm-hmm. And they're just having to survive. And this will probably grow into a tradition and their children will learn this technique, so on and so on. So, you know, my mission is done here to the purpose that I was here for. Mm -hmm. You're very good. And as you're in this old age now and feeling fulfilled and feeling that you have done what you came here to do, Perhaps you can tell me a little bit about that life that you've led so far. The type of upbringing you had. Perhaps you had a family of your own. I think going back there, I I think as I was growing up, there was, I've seen a lot of struggles, but as a kid, um, I was too young to have people listen to me. So, but deep in my heart, I knew there was something that I knew I, I needed to do when I get old enough. And that's, that's something that I didn't know what it was. I knew there was a mission or something that I needed to do. I couldn't quite understand or pinpoint what that was. And so when I got old enough, I think probably in my early 20s, I think, because I think I was 32, I start kind of living, doing what I'm supposed to do, but it was just continuously bugging me. So like, because I'll get this like a nudge, like you need to do what you're here to do. And when I feel that my mind is saying, also saying, well, what is it that what I'm supposed to do? And so I think over the time period, that's when I start searching for my purpose or the destiny that the incarnation or the reason that I'm incarnated here. And I think that's why fast forward to probably late twenties and on, I was old enough to take a little trip on a journey. And, and then that it was a dream that came in. I think, yeah, I believe it was a dream that came in telling me to go to a certain pyramid and the certain pyramid, which was Giza, would have the answers. Mm-hmm. The little puzzle piece or the key that is going to unlock what I'm meant to do here. So it was like, it taught me patience as well as discovering things on my own 
without being afraid. And also that also taught me to trust my intuition, to mm -hmm. connect to my inner, inner guide, inner being, which also led me to that key of the light bulb moment of when I was reading through the hieroglyphic, the pictures and what they were written. That's when they are, that's when I actually had the, uh, the unlock of the key, the door that opened to knowing what I'm supposed to do, like the clarity. Mm -hmm. uh, and how is it that you've learned to read hieroglyphs? I think I did study in my 20s. Mm -hmm. Something made me wanted to learn how to read. I don't think it was like a necessity, like kids having to go to school and having to learn it, but it was your choice and I chose to learn. But I think it was all preparation for the future. What I'm getting right now is that I was fascinated wanting to know more in order to know, wanting to know more, I needed to learn how to read. And that was all the preparation that needed to be done in order for me to go into the, the pyramid to read, which unlocked the keys. Um, Are people in your time still using hieroglyphs to read, uh, to write? Or is there another system in use now? There are I mean, I think I'm in the ancient days, so not everybody knew how to read. You could learn, but reading was considered a kind of like a high standard. People, the either the royalty or the important people um, are the ones that usually know how to read. Or if you, if you were to teach yourself. Um, which took patience. And then also that taught, the patience that taught me to learn how to read on my own. Also the wanting to because it creates frustration and perseverance of continuously moving forward, no matter how hard it is, is all preparation and preparing my myself to be teaching the others the techniques, and I'm, I think I did teach him little few words here and there, like not to read a whole book or anything, but a few words here and there, so they could utilize that in order to also even write notes or memos to their other, you know, people that trades with them. But that requires massive patience, uh, massive amounts of overcoming frustration and, and being a teacher, you have to master that to yourself because you're a teacher and a student. And once you master that, then you could teach others. So I think that's what happened in my probably mid-teens through my almost to my mid-20s to late 20s was developing learning the skills how to read teaching myself patience teaching myself how to work with other people how to teach them patience 
help them evolve, injecting knowledge into their head, but in a gentle way, not a condescending way, but in a very gentle manner. Because people like to learn, but it's very hard for people who's never, you know, we're teaching people that are older. So some young, but majority of them are old. So they develop this conditioning or habits. So it's trying to break that habit takes a lot of patience. So mm -hmm. that's why I think in my early ages, that's what I've been doing is preparing, uh, mastering that part to prepare all that for the future, which will help serve me my purpose or the mission that I'm here for. Mm -hmm. Very good. Now let's move ahead in time now. Moving ahead in time to the next significant moment in that lifetime, perhaps the last day of your life. Five, moving ahead now in time for three, two, and one. And tell me what's going on. I'm looking at from above, so I think I left the body, so I've died. Mm -hmm. Can you see your body? Mm -hmm. I'm just laying there like I'm sleeping again. Mm -hmm. And what happens? It's just very peaceful. Mm, I see a bunch of people around me. Mm -hmm. I'm like looking from a bird's eye view, so they're all... I could feel them, how grateful they are. Um, they're sad, but not in a bad way. They're just, you know, they're very grateful. Mm -hmm. they, they feel full in their heart for how much, how far they have become. Because um, I helped them lead the way and helped him discover all these talents. So I think they're preparing to do a bit, you know, proper burial and like a coffin type of thing. Are any of these people your children, perhaps? No, I don't think I had any kids. Mm hmm I don't think, I don't know if I got married or had any kids. I think I was literally there just to do my mission. Very good. So what happens next to your soul? Do you stay there for a while or do you move on? I feel like it's done and serve my purpose and, you know, I could head back, mm -hmm. head back towards the light. Does anyone come to collect you or do you go on your own? I do see some archangels next to me. But I just, uh, I feel their energy and they're proud. Uh, they're just the smile and their energy is very, uh, very proud of me and I feel good and feel like I have fulfilled a good life I don't think I've ever felt lonely or anything either even though I wasn't married because my mind was more on not having a family or anything but helping to serve the people there. Mm -hmm. So all the archangels and I are all floating back to the light. Very good. What happens so, next? 
Let me just go back to the heart dimension. Let me go do the same thing, the review with the council. Basically, you know, I get to take my costume off as the male that helped in Egypt. How it felt like to be a human also. What do you think about being human now as your first experience? Mm. Um, the life back in that lifetime is simple, but definitely more difficult because they don't realize the power that they have. They don't realize that they're always connected to source, whereas any other souls in any different planets, they all do know. Mm -hmm. But as a human, due to the free will, as soon as you incarnate, you don't feel. You don't know that intuition is your guide. Mm -hmm. You don't realize you have psychic gifts and all that powers and you know the third eye. And so it's kind of like not abandoned, but they feel like they just have to survive on whatever they can, you know, like an abandoned child, you know. So that's the hard part being a human. Uh, you don't know that you're always connected. They're always guiding you. You're just thinking you're making it up. You know, so. And now as you look back upon that life, how do you evaluate your performance? I'm very happy. I mean, could I have done more? Maybe, but I think I did as much as I can. Um, literally, like if I had a, piece of paper and they said this is your mission I believe I got a hundred on it you know like I got a good grade because the outcome there was some frustration struggle I think at the point before when I was in my early days but then that is also the catalyst to wanting to make me want to change things if I was comfortable, then I wouldn't want to change things and wanting to help. So that uncomfortable, like the yin and the yang, you know, the cause and the effect, the uncomfortable cause helped me wanting to improve, which helped me wanting to learn more how to improve, which also create a uh, desire wanting to learn to read or uh, any other techniques and then uh, that also helped it's like one thing leads to another I just follow my steps of the impulse and what I felt like I needed to do next I never knew what I needed to do next but I just felt my impulse mm -hmm. and it's like if I feel stuck or if I feel like I'm stagnant and then the, then I get a dream or a message mm -hmm. it's strong, it's strong enough for me to having to follow through with it or else it will continue to like, you know, like an alarm, it'll beep at me. Mm -hmm. So um, I feel like I did, I did pretty good because it's kind of like having my own navigation, like everybody has their own navigation, but they don't trust it. But I decide to trust it. And that's what I was supposed to do. So I passed the test. Mm -hmm. Very good. 
Now tell me, being in the spirit realm now, is there any guides there with you? Anyone that's familiar to you? Anyone that you can ask questions perhaps? Mm. Not anybody in particular, but Archangel Michael is right there with me. Mm -hmm. I think I might be able to ask him. Very good. Connect with him now and see what he says. And if you have any questions, you can ask them. He's just saying, I did very good. Very proud. He's been watching over me. He's always watching over me. As he he just mentions that, just like him, as a leader of all the archangels and the angels, I was the leader in that crowd. And mm -hmm. so he's very proud of overcoming any obstacles because I, I believe I did have things that would have just obstacles that would have just made me not lead towards that path. Um, Ask him about that obstacle that you're experiencing in the lifetime of Alexis. The obstacle of the house flooding a few days ago. <sighs> Why did that get in your way? Mm, he's saying that this helped me overcome no matter what type of natural disaster that is out of your control will help you strengthen and overcome which means this taught me even more how to go with the flow and staying in the high vibration and positive energy, knowing that I am protected by the divine, even though it seems as other people would think unfair or victim mentality. Um, it was like a sort of like a test that to see, um, and also like a like a military training. <laughs> I think that's what I'm hearing. Military training to help overcome any disaster, no matter I could control it or not. And also knowing how to handle the aftermath disaster in a calm manner. Not freaking out, but just rebuilding and sharing the story. I don't know what happened. I think my internet got disconnected. Yeah, I lost you. Yeah. You were talking about... Um, um, I think I was yeah, the, about the, the disaster. Flood. Yeah. I felt this bright light. And I was like, I looked over, I was like, what happened to the screen? Um, my internet got disconnected. Yeah, 
So oh, no, something, happened? as you were talking about something, some kind of obstacle <clears throat> out of your control, then this happened. So yeah, like just now, <clears throat> it was out of control. Yeah, exactly. It got disconnected, but yeah. it's okay. You just go with the flow. Yeah. It's funny. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> okay. Um. Oh, let me get back. Okay. Uh, reconnect. Make yourself comfortable. <sighs> Breathing in, nice and easy. I'm going to count you back from five to one and see where you'll go. And perhaps we can, we can do a scan of your body afterwards. Five, drifting and floating through space and time. Four, going all the way back, connecting to where you left off. Three, two, and one. So uh, he's saying that there are many directions in life. So learning to be flexible and that'll help with easy, ease your mind. I think that's what it was supposed to help me learn or not necessarily teach me because I did I did kind of go with the flow but it was like you know like a test to mm -hmm. see to see if I truly because I never had such a disaster natural disaster happen before so this was a big deal so it was a test and he said that I passed. I did good. Open your eyes now. And welcome back. Thank you. Oh, goodness. Well, like again, I don't expect what's going to come out, but it'd be kind of random. It's, it's funny because it's like, that's why I was like, am I making this up or just like a continuous of my other hypnosis session, okay. which, which was the beyond quantum hypnosis. Mm -hmm. um, so um, I had two sessions there for myself. And it was kind of like the second session with the guy that I was doing uh, with. When he took me, I went to the Egypt, but I couldn't kind of find other story so it kind of got stuck mm. so I remember we just kind of left that scene and went to somewhere else so it was like we kind of went back there but then this story continued a little bit more but then the the difference I knew this was different because there was a a flow to the story even mm -hmm. though it's a different lifetime there was a the the, the root purpose of the story matched every mm -hmm. time so even as I was saying whatever came to my mind I was like thinking in my back I was like oh that's why that yeah. happened in this you know because mm -hmm. I did the same thing yeah yeah so it was good it was good yeah. thank you so much well thank you oh my goodness <laughs> Well, that was a nice little uh, practice of how if internet gets disconnected. Yeah. Oh, it happens. Yeah. Yeah. That was the first time that ever happened to me.